Hey guys, if you haven't heard about Anchor, it's the easiest way to make a podcast with everything you need all in one place. Let me explain. Anchor has the tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. When hosting on Anchor, you can distribute your podcast on listening platforms like Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and more. And trust me, guys, it works. It's everything you need to make a podcast all in one place. And the best of all, it is totally free. Yes, totally free. So download the Anchor app today or go to anchor.fm to get started. Hey, Marco. Hello, hello. Hello, hello. How are you? Pretty good about you. Not too bad. Sorry about that. I don't know why I couldn't log on. Oh, no, you're good. That's why I decided just to do uh, Riverside since um, you don't have to log into anything. Right. Okay, brilliant. Because yeah, I did do Microsoft Teams, um, but I decided to switch it to, uh, to Google Meet just in case if... Uh, you know, if, if it wasn't going to let people in. And since Google yes. Meet is just browser-based, just like this one, I thought it'd be easier. But obviously, I, mean, I guess you had to sign in to Google, I'm assuming. And sure. touch made it harder. So I don't know if I'll keep it uh, through Google Meet or try or just keep it with Microsoft Teams. But right now, I guess this one will work. Cool. I'm ready whenever you are, Marco. Oh, we're we're already starting. Recording's already going. Okay, it's already going. Yeah, that's how I do it. That's uh, like no questions, like no pre questions, no nothing. We just then I hit record. We start it that way, nice and raw. So for the people out there, can you explain, you know, what you do. Yeah, so I'm a, a Reiki master practitioner and a meditation teacher. And I help people primarily with anger problems. So I use techniques through meditation to help them um, figure out their triggers and manage their, their anger through their day-to-day -day lives. So that's in a, in a, in a nutshell what, what I do. Perfect, perfect. And what made you want to do it? Um, I've always wanted, I've always been drawn to sort of holistic sort of um, remedies um, and just sort of healing yourself through sort of, you know, healing um, homeopathic medicines and all that sort of stuff. And I found that I really gravitate towards this because ideally what you're doing is you're just you're helping people right mm -hmm. and it just gives me the biggest joy just to help someone i just love i love helping someone um so it's a little bit of a selfish reason but it's just so that i can feel good i suppose by helping someone nothing's ever selfish you know mm. I mean, by the way, this will get posted out on New Year's, which would be a perfect time for people that want to do, you know, New Year's resolutions and all that fun stuff. But anywho, besides that oh. point, um, why why do people, well, I guess I can say it this way, why are people, well, I can't speak right now, uh, why do more people get mad than others? Like why? Like why are there more anger built up in one person compared to another person? And, and let's say they're both going through the same thing, but one is just handling it better than the other. Good question. Um, the reason I believe that people get more angry than other people is because they create that pathway to their brains, to that anger area of their brain. So if I could just sort of digress a little bit and just explain about what awareness in the mind is and I'll answer that question um, so you have the mind which is your head you know and in your head you have different different compartments so you have a happy side you have a jealous side 
you have an envious side, you have an anger side, you have all these different areas. And awareness is like a globe of light. And what that awareness does is it travels within your head. So once it goes to the angry of the mind, it'll light up and it'll give you the emotion of being angry. Uh, it'll travel to the happy side of the brain and it'll light up and it'll give you that emotion of feeling happy. And what people tend to do, just to answer your question, is people tend to be more in that angry area of their mind a lot. Um, you know, anything good can happen to them. Uh, you know, they might have just won ten million pounds on, on the lottery, and they'll still find some negative aspect to it because their awareness is constantly in that angry area of their mind. You know, they've created that pathway. Anything happens, let's just go straight to the angry area of the mind. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you'll come across people who are very uh, positive, very happy. And you say, oh, they're always such a jolly person, right? Mm -hmm. It's because they, they reside in that part of their brain. Their awareness is in that side of their brain where it's constantly happy. So I hope, that, yeah, I think that answers your question because people reside there so much. Perfect, perfect. And have you ever heard the saying, uh, hurt people hurt people? Uh, I haven't, no. Yeah, well, I guess it's a saying, I, for, I think I heard it on Joe Rogan's, and then my girlfriend, she goes to school uh, for human services, and she has to take some psychology classes, and in her yeah. one of her classes, they talked about that same saying about uh, hurt people hurt people, which obviously from the, uh, if with how the saying says people that are hurt are going to hurt other people why do you think that why do you think people who are always who are angry or hurt or miserable want others to be like that too i suppose uh i suppose it's because they don't know anything different i suppose um it's a bit like this you know when people who are very uh, what's the word people who tend to not tell tell the truth a lot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, who are a bit deceived. They will always look at other people in the same light. That, oh, every person is not honest. Right? So, you know, I, I suppose it's it's because people tend to think other people are like themselves. If I'm a generally a, a good person, I look for the good in someone, I'll always think that person is good, irrespective of how bad they are in their lives. I have a lot of people that come to me from all walks of life, you know, professionals, uh, people who are in poverty, people who uh, are super rich, you know, and we all come, I always look for the good in someone because that's my nature, right? And I tend to find it as well. I will find it mm -hmm. because I believe there is good in, in someone. Hurt, you know, the, the same way you mentioned hurt, hurt sorry, what was it again? It was hurt people, hurt people. Yep. Yeah. You know, it, it's probably because that's that's all they know. They don't know anything different than that. So when they start to change, and, and this is part of what I do, perhaps in, in you know uh, the sort of service I provide to people, is you know I help people move their awareness from that part of their brain, so that in those moments they can see the good in people, they can be a little bit more they, they can be happy. You know, when something bad does happen, you know make them see the good, make them find the good in that. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I, I think it's because that that reason people just don't know any better. And if you don't, then you know, how, can you, how can you blame them for being the way they are? You know, I, when I was very young, I grew up in, you know, from the UK, I'm from London, uh, you know, I'm of Asian heritage. And back in the sort of 80s, 70s, 80s, when I was growing up, you know, there was a lot of there was a lot of racists in this part of the world. And you, you know, we, we had kids that used to say really bad things to us. And the first thing my parents would say was, is that it's not the child's fault. It's the parents' fault. Because mm -hmm. they're born like that, right? They're taught how to be racist. <laughs> okay. So, you know, I think it, it covers that same sort of point, right? It's just how you're taught. And it's just, it's just their upbringing, maybe. It's just the, the people that they surround themselves with that makes them constantly think in a particular way or create those really bad habits, you know? And it's about breaking those habits then. Uh, 
finding those trigger points and breaking those habits so that they can then start to think in a different way and, and have a different outcome to life. Yeah, that's how kind of it is with everything. Um, I guess you can say it's like environmental in a way. Where people learn from their environment, like how you said, like from their parents, with kids, yeah. with how kids are sometimes. Yeah, yeah. Just how people are sometimes the people like the friends they hang out with that some people can act like that and it's just also through experiences cool. where people again when they're always angry they're always miserable and they or even happy yeah. because a lot of just whatever they're going through so, you know, so uh, no one's life is perfect obviously i mean everyone no, goes absolutely. through different things that's what creates yeah. the character on someone it's always a sad thing to see people who are miserable, who you can see in them that just with a little bit of help with, for the, with the right person can help them. But yeah, it's also like in that comfort zone where, which again, sad and scary thing to see, but where people are just in that negative area for so long that at that point, it's that's their comfort zone. They're comfortable in there to when yeah. if, if they want to be better or they see anything positive, they don't, yeah. it's uncomfortable for them because they've always either, let's say they were from the beginning experiencing positive stuff and then life happened, it, everything went down south and then they were there for so long that now they're comfortable there. And it's that's why some people, uh, they, you can, make them smile you can try your best to make them happy and they they still like they they you'll see us you maybe crack a smile but they're, they're just they're just still miserable and yeah exactly you're right it's, it's a bit like uh i have this analogy when i was when i was younger i i used to go to a friend's house uh and i used to have to cut through the park mm. to get there mm. and um, it was like an oval shaped park, so we had to go on the pavement to get to the other side. He had like a couple of entrances to the park, so go to one entrance and come out the other. And uh, one day it was, it was raining quite a bit, and I was, you know, I was just on my way to my friends, and I thought, oh, you know what, it's, it'll be quicker if I just cut through on the grass. Yeah, if I go on my bike through the grass and just cut through the park like that. Um, so I, I, that's what I did. Um, and then the next time I went to my friend's house, it wasn't raining, but I thought, oh, that last time I went through the grass, it was a lot quicker. So I'm just going to go down there. You know, human nature is to, to find the easiest possible solution to anything. Um, and when I did that, I ended up creating a path in the grass, in the park. You know, and then I noticed other people riding their bike on there. I noticed other people walking on there because you know, like when you walk over something so much on a piece of grass, you know, it starts to die, doesn't it, that, that bit. Mm -hmm. um, and it's the same with our, our thoughts as well. We we tend to create those sort of grooves, the same sort of groove I created in that park. We create those same grooves in our mind. Um, and that could be habit, that could be in the form of a habit, you know, being angry, uh, being happy, being silly, whatever it may be, we create these grooves in our, in our mind. And it becomes really easy to get to because we don't have to, you know, we don't have to, uh, you know, reinvent the wheel to get there. It's, it's so easy to go there because we've created that groove already. So yeah, it's, it's definitely, it's with anything, like you said before, it's, it's to, be the, to do with the environment, as well, the, the, the type of people that you hang around with, your circumstances in life. You know, people often play the card of, well, you know, well, this has happened to me and that's happened to me. And yes, it's very unfortunate, and it's not your fault that it's happened to you, but what are you going to do about it? You know, you're not going to continue. What, if you continue moaning about it, nothing's going to happen. Mm -hmm. All you're doing is create that groove. It's getting thicker and thicker and thicker, and you're, you're, you know, you're allowing your awareness to go to that part of your brain, which is you know, very negative. Um, so you have to make that choice then like what is it that i'm going to do to to change that feeling to change the way i think 
You know, if you carry on doing the same thing, you know, one plus one is always going to be two, right? Mm-hmm. And keeping one plus one is still going to be two. But if you do one plus five, you're going to get a different result. So it's, it's very much down to the individual, how they change what the outcome is in their life, opposed to blaming it on X, Y, and Z. Mm-hmm. And look, I get it. Bad things happen to people. I, I can take care of it. A lot of things, bad things have happened to me in my life. Uh, do I sit here dwelling, oh, it's, you know, it's this person's fault, that person's fault, or if I didn't take a right turn, and this would not happen, and, you know. Yeah, there's, there's always ifs and buts in life, but, you know, it's happened now. What are you going to do about it? You know, what do you learn from that situation? How do you move on from that? Yeah. So, yeah. Like, so many people are stuck in the past. So many people keep trying to live the past instead of just trying to live in the future. Because I know there was a thing that Joe Rogan said, which uh, I guess you can kind of say stuck with me. Um, Correct me if I'm wrong. I mean, I'm trying to remember. I I heard it a bit ago, so I might not say it word for word. Um, But I know he said something about, kind of like how you said when people are, like once bad stuff happens to them, and they're kind of just moaning and whining and crying about it, about this is why I'm here, or I should have done this for this outcome and yada yada yada. It's like okay, yeah. you know, I'm sorry all that happened, but that's in the past. Right now is right now, and do what change your habit or whatever. You're, like if you're crying or moaning, if you're whining about whatever you didn't do back then, do it now. So then in the future, you can see a re- you can see a result rather than just keep living through it, keep just whining about going through what you're th- going through instead of making a change and that's always hard for people because I mean I'm I guess you can say I, I'm part of uh, of it but of um, being scared to ask for help because a lot of the times I never really I guess you could say like had help like people said they were there but really when I asked for help they kind of were it, it was kind of like a like a job for them like oh I gotta help him yeah. and so then it's like to me the, even young I mean that just stuck with me because then um it was just just trying to help people it was easy for me like I would always want to help people but then when it came to me I was always scared to ask for help because again like either um I either get people that would just kind of say oh well no or like just people that never really wanted to help and and that's kind of how it is with people nowadays with with that when they're miserable a lot of times the reasons why they're miserable or they're hurt they're angry it's just because they're scared to ask for help because they've we have either been going either struggling financially for years upon years or trying to uh fill an empty hole that they've had like either like they've been single for so long and so they they just ne- have never found a significant other and or I don't know I mean the death of someone yeah, and it just gets them and they never ask for help of of anything and it just sticks with them and through that I feel like that can create a lot more anger because they're not asking for help it's everything just getting built upon them to where one small click can just they can just let everything go yeah, I agree. I think the I think the the biggest problem people have sometimes is people that don't ask for help is because some of them don't know how to ask for help or they don't think that they actually need help. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know that that's quite a, a dangerous area because when you think you don't need help, that means that you're you're accepting of your environment around you. Think, well, this is life. This is the way it's meant to be. You know, and it, and it's not. And I think deep down inside, we all know that it's not. But I just think some people are just, they, they may, and some people feel a weakness asking for help as well. Uh, they think it's a sign of weakness if you ask for help. Because, you know, you should be, you know, the best person in the world and you should be able to do everything, you know. And, and it's impossible to do it. It's really hard to do everything. In the, you, you can't do everything. Mm-hmm. Um, there are some great people out there who can do quite a lot, um, but then it starts the 
start to affect you at some point. You know, if you if you take you know parents for example, if you look at um, there's, there's loads of parents out there, mums and dads who you know they do a lot for their children. You know, and and for their health, so they they look after the children, take them to school, uh, you know, do all the cooking, do all the cleaning, um, do all grocery shopping. You know, uh, they do everything, but at some point it's going to take its toll on you, and you're going to need help. And those people that don't ask for help, that's when they start to break down. You know, um, when they don't take a rest, when they don't think, "Oh no, I can't do that because my child needs me more than anything in the world." You know, right now. Um, so yes, I, I, people find it very difficult to ask for help. But those people that evolve and know that they need help, you know, I, I was one of those people. In, life where I thought, no, I need to change the way I am, the way I behave to, you know, certain situations, and I, I just don't know how to do it, so how, how can I do it? Uh, and, and it's about going out there and, and researching, and yeah, you're going to have some some failures, but, you know, uh, what life taught me is that, you know, failures are just a part of your journey, you know, it helps you, it helps you to propel to the next step, makes you learn, um, you know, learn from those mistakes or those failures and see how you can do it now. That's probably a bit like what you're doing now, your podcast, how you're doing. Mm-hmm. And I'm sure that it was a little bit difficult um, and you didn't understand things, but you went away, you researched, you collaborated with people, you found out a bit more, uh, you know, sent customer service support, some questions, and there you go. And you become better and better at it. And that comes back to the point of what you were talking about earlier, about habits. You know, you're creating a new habit for yourself. Um, and if you keep at it, then you'll, you'll do well at it. You know, I have, I have this saying that uh, my mentor said to me a long time ago, where you know, where awareness goes, energy flows. Mm-hmm. So wherever your awareness is going in life, that's where your energy is flowing to. Yeah. So if you if you're thinking, oh, today Marco's thinking, oh yeah, after this podcast, you know, I fancy having uh, you know an avocado with toast. Yeah. Now. Um, you may choose a different option. I'm just giving the option back to high level people, but you know, you may think that, and then so your awareness is going there, your energy is flowing there. So the first thing you'll probably do is you'll go to your you know, your fridge to see if there's an avocado, to see if you've got toast. If you haven't got it, then it'll be like, oh, actually, you know, maybe I need to go to the shop and get it. So your awareness is going there, your energy is flowing there, and then eventually you create, you know, the avocado and toast that you want to. Mm-hmm. So it's like that with any anything in life. Anything that you do in life is based on what you you created to a certain degree, you know. Yeah, that's true. And like with the podcast, um, I never even thought about creating a podcast. I just uh, like I started it this year in July, and like how you said, I mean, I this uh, November and December were kind of like the two months where I've had where I started to get more collaborations uh, with people with, I guess you can say strangers because uh, the collaborations I did were with people I knew and yeah. I, and same with me. Cause then I want to get uh, my real estate license so I can learn real estate. So then I can invest in real estate when, when I know how to do it while also knowing the sales part of it. And so now you have said about energy when I, like I, I never, I guess you can say, I kind of never really knew what I wanted to do in life, but I kept always telling my parents when I was young, "Hey, I wanna." Out of the three siblings, about about uh, out of uh, my older brother and my younger sister, me being the middle child, I'm, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be the rich one. I'm gonna be the one with the most money, and I always keep focusing my energy towards that. But Good. it was always one of those things of how will I get there? But I never knew how. I I just kept telling myself, oh, I'm going to get it. I'm going to get it. But I never knew how until, you know, life happened. And then I guess you can say I started focusing more with my mind. I started looking into myself and I kept asking myself, first, the why. Why should I, why do I want to be a millionaire by the age of 30? Because then that's the goal that I set is to be a millionaire by the age of 30. Then that's when I started. Okay. Let me ask my. Let me ask the questions. Why do I want to do it? And then I found the. Then I found my purpose on why. And then I say, okay. Uh, I. I found it. Now how can I get it? And that's what I'm trying to. And that's. Once I started realizing that, opportunities came up. 
with the podcast again i never really i never knew i'd do one i listened to one and i realized this is actually fun this is this is nice like i the only hobbies i had were to watch youtube and i guess you can kind of say eat and that's really it and scroll through social media i really didn't have much of a hobby i used to go to the gym but then again life happened and then my mental health my mental state just deteriorated and i kind of stopped going which you could probably obviously tell um and then i just like i want to also focus my energy towards going to the gym because it, it was relaxing but i tried finding other ways to relax which you know in turn with the with the podcast i'm studying to try to get my license and then recently i was meditating and because i i again i wanted to focus a lot with my mental health and with meditating i i've never done it and so when i did it it was hard for me because i tried using this one app i don't know if you've ever heard of it but it's called headspace yeah and um i when i uh used it i thought i was doing good but i don't know like um okay so marco let me ask you a question about meditation because there's there's a lot of there's a lot of uh, meditation techniques out there um there's a lot of stuff about meditation but i'm gonna ask you the question hmm. how is it how do you meditate what is it that you do to meditate well what i would do is um because since i live with my girlfriend i'd always uh, want to wake up earlier uh than her go to the living room and kind of just i put in my headphones and put on the noise canceling so i could almost hear almost little to no noise sit on the couch and just breathe in and breathe out and just try to clear my mind but it was always hard for me because i always had so much in my mind that it I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't know if there's just other, maybe there's other ways I could do it. But to me, I was, yeah. there was just so much in my head, especially negative ones that even if I did it for 10, 15 minutes, I, once I, once I got done meditating, I'd say, well, I don't know if I'm better because I, I, I still have those thoughts. Yeah. Th- this is the biggest myth about meditation. The biggest myth about meditation is that you have to clear your mind. You have to be thinking of nothing at all. And Marco, if you were thinking of nothing at all, you'd be dead. You have to be thinking of something when you're doing... If you're conscious, you have to be thinking of something. You cannot be thinking of nothing at all. So the thing in meditation is, is you know, people tend to, you know, New Year's is a class, you know, and, you know, People think, oh, yeah, I've heard really great things about meditation. I'm going to you know, go to YouTube and I'm going to find some meditation, some guided meditation. And I'm going to follow that. And people do exactly what you've just described. I've got so many thoughts going in my head. I can't keep you know, my awareness of one thing or clear my mind completely. And then they fail and they just give up. The whole point of meditation is, to, as I was talking earlier about your awareness, you need to, be, you need to learn to move your awareness or keep your awareness on one thing for an extended period of time. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Meditation is keeping your awareness on one thing for an extended period of time. And in order to do that, you need to be able to know what awareness is, you need to have willpower, and you need to know how to concentrate as well. These are the three things in meditation that are required. And when I'm when I'm helping people with regards to their anger or, you know, making their habits better in, in some shape or form, these are the three things that we work on first to incorporate those into their lives, okay? It's not just about, you know, oh, yeah, I get angry every time I speak to my girlfriend or I get angry every time I speak to my, you know, my dad. That's what I want to work on. No, you need to work on figuring that out in the rest of your life as well. Because how you do... Anything is how you do everything, right? Mm-hmm. I don't know if you've heard that before. How you do it, anything is how you do everything. So when you sit down to meditation, it's about moving your awareness. For example, for you, Marco, like you said, you want to be a millionaire by the time you're 30. You want to get into real estate. You know, So it's about sitting there, visualizing, keeping your awareness on that, that thought, that process, and then 
meditating on that and visualizing what your life would be like as a millionaire your whys and what's and what's going to happen when you get the money and what you're going to do with that money and how your life's going to look like are you going to get married are you going to have kids uh, are you going to do all of the above or none of the above whatever it is you start to do that and then wherever your awareness goes your energy is flowing right it's not going into all different directions like what you said you did literally when you sat down to meditate your awareness is going all over the place you want to focus it on one thing right and then it's about then after you know i think a lot of people might have, maybe some of you listening or maybe yourself has, have heard of the you know the book the secret and it's all about manifesting manifest manifesting things into your life Yes, that's true, you can, and that's part of the process is visualizing, but what you need to do in life is action. You can have the desire to do something, you can have the will to do it, but until you don't apply action to anything, you can't do nothing. Mm-hmm. If you really want that avocado on toast, you're going to have to get up, and you're going to have to go and walk and do, and you're going to have to do something, right? So when it comes down to your real estate, if you want to do something, then you're going to have to get up and research, talk to people, how to do it, where do I get the capital from? You've got to start answering all these questions. And just a little bit of a tip for, for yourself, maybe, and for other people that may be listening, is that if you can spend, and I, I learned this from a book, actually, that I, um, I read, it's, it's by a guy called Robin Sharma. Mm-hmm. It's called The 5am Club. Um, and I believe he's based in the States. Um, and in that book, he says, in the morning, if you can spend 90 minutes on a project, whatever that project is, whatever it is, a passion project, if you can spend 90 minutes on that project every morning, you'll see how quickly that you'll complete and achieve what you want to achieve. You know? Mm-hmm. And again, that's applying, that's the whole thing of where awareness goes, energy flows, right? If your awareness is constantly going there to your real estate business, your energy is flowing there. You're putting energy. That's what's going to grow in your life. If your awareness is constantly going down to something negative in your life, guess what? That's what's going to grow in your life. So it depends depends where you put your awareness to, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, and I and I'm I'm being very conscious of the fact that I keep saying awareness, not the mind. Because people say, "Oh, the mind wonders." No, it's not. The mind doesn't wonder. Your awareness wonders. Your mind is static. It's there. You choose where you want your awareness to go to. And what probably happens as well, Marco, is that when you're when you're around people, certain people, uh, or certain things happen to you, you allow people and you allow situations in your life to dictate to you where your awareness goes. You know, so you mentioned that you had a girlfriend. So maybe when your girlfriend comes home, you know, she'll say something to you maybe. You know, I'm not saying this is the case, but mm-hmm. it's easy to get with you know, she may pay up, come on, she may say something to you, and you may get really annoyed by it. So you've allowed whatever she said to you to dictate to you how you feel. You know, I was uh, I was uh, having a little uh, disagreement with my wife uh, a few weeks ago, um, and you know, one of the things she said to me was, "Oh, look, you you just you go. We'll talk about this afterwards because I don't want to spoil your morning." Your morning. Because uh, I was I was I was stepping out for a couple of hours, and I said, "Listen, you know, you, you're not going to spoil my morning because I won't allow it. I won't allow my awareness to go to that part of my brain where, you know, is going to make me annoyed. You know, yes, I disagreed with some of the things she was saying and vice versa, and, you know, um, but I didn't allow it to spoil my morning. I had to come back and deal with it, which I did, but I didn't allow my awareness to go to that part of my brain." I took it to a part of my brain where I said, actually, you know what? You know, maybe she, she has a point. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look at this when I come back. I'm going to address this when I come back. And I could be, there could be some, something she's saying to me. Mm-hmm. So you, you've got to make that choice in your life, how you move your awareness, where you want to go to. You know? Exactly, exactly. And so then... Um... And so, like, with the whole, like, with your awareness and everything, like, let's say, um, like, I, like, obviously, like, uh, when I, with, like, the real estate, when I need to study all the fun stuff and I need to pass a test, 
Um, to what kind of gets me is because I've already failed the test twice, and I'm still going at it to still study. Um, but is there anything that I can do where, let's like let's say I, I study and everything, and then I fail again, and then my mind kind of reverts to well you failed so, kind of, eh like it it is what it is I guess now like is there is there anything that you, you think I could do to 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 fix that type of mindset like let's say when I'm meditating and I and I wanna focus on that like how can I how can I not just give up that easily? Like just say, ah, I gave up. Okay. I guess that's, this isn't for me. Yeah. Like, is there anything that I can do or think of? Yeah. So what you're, what you're talking about, and correct me if I'm wrong, is your willpower, mm -hmm. you know, will, your willpower not to give up. Um, and again, this, as I said to you before, in meditation is all about awareness, constitution, and willpower. So if you're talking about that specific, um, you know, increasing your willpower, if you look, if you look at willpower, willpower is very much, um, you know, we're all born with different levels of willpower. You know, uh, some of us are born with level one, some are born with level two, some are level three. But the great thing about willpower is that it never, it never diminishes. So you can always, you know, if you're at level one, you can. Increase your willpower to level two. If you, you know, and, you, and then you can go up and up and up. But with willpower, it never, it never diminishes. It never goes down. Uh, and that's when you. That, that's how you can start. So understanding that is, is, is really important to, be, to begin with. And then it's about applying that to your life. So what are the simple things you can do in life? To, to increase your willpower. Yeah? So you could, first of all, if you look at the process of sleeping, yeah? when you go to sleep, you put your pajamas on, yeah? you then uh, get into bed and then you go to sleep. Right? So is that all making sense to you so far, Mark? Yeah. Yeah, yeah great. So yeah, so when I'm using an example of of going to sleep so when you you put your pajamas on you go to sleep and then you wake up so in order to finish up that process yeah you make your bed yeah so the first step in increasing your willpower is finish off what you begin yeah? so you wake up in the morning and when you go to sleep just to reiterate again pajamas go to sleep and when you wake up to finish off that process just make your bed don't go to the toilet don't, don't, don't brush your teeth don't go and, you know, have a shower, make yourself a coffee, whatever it is. No, you do your best. Finish off what you begin. Yeah? So that's the first step of how to increase your willpower. The second step of increasing your willpower is then to do a little bit better than you think you can. So if we use the same example of, of sleep again, you know, when you wake up in the morning, you know, you finish off that process of sleeping by doing your bed up, you know, Maybe you can do it a little bit better this time. Maybe you can, um, you know, um, do put some fluffy, fluff your pillows a bit more, you know, uh, take out all the creases out of your duvet. You know, do it a little bit better than you think you can. And then the third thing in, to increase your willpower is to do even better than you think you can. So maybe when you're doing your bed in the morning, after finishing that process, you then can perhaps Put your tuck your duvet right in. You know, like sometimes when you go to the hotel, when you go to a hotel, uh, and you know you find it really hard to get into the duvet because it's so it's so tightly tucked in. Mm. You know, yeah. So, so these are the these are the three things you need to do. So, to answer your question about increasing your willpower, not thinking like that is one. Well, you've got to start applying these things to your life. These little things like doing your bed. You know, when I first started off this process, one of the things I did uh, was I used to do my bed and I used to then, um, you know, make sure that every time I had eaten something, I would never leave my sink dirty before I go to sleep. So when I say dirty, I, there'd be no dishes in, 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 the, in the sink. So I'd make sure everything's washed. So in the morning now, when I go, when I go back home, you know, my sink's going to be empty. When I go to sleep, it'll be empty. So it's these little things. If you start to apply these little things in your life, 
you'll start to increase your willpower. As I said before, willpower never diminishes. Yeah, mm -hmm. you always have different levels. Willpower never diminishes. And then the the bigger things in life, like passing the exam or worrying about, oh, will I be able to do it again? They won't. They won't affect you that much because you already have it in place. How you do anything is how you do everything, right? So you've got to learn to increase your willpower. And then also, when you, you know, let's hope, I hope you don't fail the next one, but let's just say, for example, you do. Or even now you may be thinking, oh, you know, I've, I've, I've failed my exam, blah, blah, it's, oh, I can never do it. You're then pushing your awareness down to that negativity, right? Move your awareness to the happy side, the side of your brain, where you're a bit more, no, I can do this, or actually, you know what? Yeah, I messed up a little bit. I didn't really study as much. I'm going to spend more time studying. Now, in order to try and preempt your next question, but like perhaps to, in order to move your awareness, some people don't know how to move their awareness. Yeah, and it's about it's it's almost like just moving it, so you start thinking in a different way. But it's very hard, you know, especially when you're when you're really upset, when you're really angry about something. It's really hard to move that awareness. You know, I can say to you, oh no, just if you're having a fight with your partner, you know, just, just move it to the happy side of the brain and you'll be you'll deal with it a lot better. But then people say, Well, how do I move it? You know, in that moment I'm really annoyed and I'm you know, what she's saying to me is not right or what he's saying to me is not right, you know. Um, and the way to do that is pretty much change the way you what I'm asking you to do is change the way to think. So I have a little tip on how to change the way you think. So when you're, let's just say, in the negative part of your brain, you know, when you start thinking more so for you, Marco, when you're saying, you know, I failed and I'm, I'm really thinking really negative, should I just give up? Blah, 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 blah. In order to change it to think, no, 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 I can do it, think of a funny story. Yeah, anything that's happened in your life. So I'll, I'll share with you my one. So my one, uh, some years ago, I went with my friends to uh, Tenerife in Spain. And we were there, and it was the last night. And one of my friends, uh, we, were, we were taking the mick out of, of some of our other friends. And she just turned around, and she walked into this glass window. It looked very transparent. And it was just so hilarious. It was, you know, only, only I know how funny it was. And even now, it's just, you know, it's changed the way I think. All of, literally, just thinking about that, I'm more happy. It doesn't mean that negative situation has gone away. All it means is that when you go back to thinking about it now, you're coming from it from a very different part of your brain. You're, you're a lot more positive about it. Oh, actually, you know what? You know, I'm going to study a little bit more. I'm going to I'm going to wake up in the morning. I said to me, you know, just to work on it, I need to do 90 minutes in the morning. I'm going to do that or half an hour, whatever you decide to do. Mm -hmm. I'm going to spend that time in the morning doing it. So and and. That's about increasing your willpower. Obviously, I've, I've talked about how, how to do that as well. So hopefully that will help you do that. It's what, cause what I do uh, sometimes, like, again, with the whole, and not just, like, uh, studying, because, you know, I mean, just like anyone, you know, when you always think you're going to fail and then you always look at the negative sides, I always have to reassure myself, like, either by listening to some uh, music, like some inspiring music or... I listen to a podcast from inspiring people or just kind of just uh, sitting down, giving myself some time. And, and I always kind of always look into, Hey, you know, if, if you quit now, like completely quit everything that you're doing, like uh, trying to shoot for real estate, trying to uh, grow the podcast, you completely quit it. Just know what you want in the future, you won't get. If you want to be getting this, you want to be getting that. If you see yourself doing this and that, you won't have it. You want to see yourself talking with with bigger and bigger people, expanding expanding the podcast, you won't see it. If you want to be seeing yourself being a real estate mongol, you won't see it if you quit now. And so, and then always, always think of, oh, I can be going to all these trips. I can be doing this. I can have all this. I could have the money to pay for experiences, not luxury stuff. Like I can be paying for experiences, but if I quit now, I won't have that. And I always, and then again with like music, just inspiring stuff. I'm like, if these guys can do it, if sim, if these people are going through tougher times than me, 
that means I can if they got out, that means I can do it too. And that's Absolutely. and that's just stuff that I always gotta keep telling myself. Even though if even in the environment, like the outside force, like if even if I don't have people that support me, because my girlfriend is probably one of my uh, biggest supporters, even though uh, her herself in some situations, I could kind of feel it where she, where she's just glad I'm trying. She, she doesn't see because in her mind with everything, like I said about um, have getting all this money to pay for experiences and doing all these trips in her mind, she's just kind of like, well, that's good you have that but she's never really seen that so she's just kind of like well that's good that you see that but i've never until i see it then that's when i know it's real but for right now i'm glad you have that uh you have that in your mind and yeah, and exactly. even exactly. Saying, her saying that i'm i want to prove her i want to prove to her and to myself of don't worry like you will see it that's why i'm doing this right now and that's why even though i go through all these tough times even though Sometimes I'll be hard on myself, but because I know I'm I'm capable of doing it, and I need to get out of my comfort zone, and I need to, if I want to get where I want to get, I need to just put my feet down, even when I'm beating myself down, and just saying, okay, I gotta do it. I got I gotta get up, no matter how deep I am in the water. I can't just give up now. I gotta keep going. Absolutely, absolutely, because you know these. Like you say, you you know you look at other people and you think, well, they can do it, I can do it as well. That's absolutely good, you know, because they're doing it because their awareness is, is going there. It's constantly there. That's why they're able to achieve the things that they achieve in life. You know, it doesn't mean. Sometimes people think, oh, you have to struggle, you have to struggle, you have to struggle, in order to to attain something good in life. And I don't believe that's entirely true. You don't have to. Yeah, obviously there are struggles, and I get that. But you know, there's got to be a balance in your day as well. If you've had a bit of a bit of a rubbish day, you know, and I haven't got something as well, it's fine. There's always tomorrow. You know, you can't think. Oh, and, you know, it doesn't mean that you can't go out and you know, whatever you guys do to to sort of enjoy yourself. You know, to have a beer or you know, go for a nice meal. You can still enjoy that in your day. Uh, what tends to happen is people start to go down that they have that spiral effect like we were talking earlier where they just yeah no no this is wrong this is wrong this is wrong this is wrong and oh, no, i'm not going to be able to do this i'm not going to be able to do that you're right you know you're not going to be able to do it if you if you say to yourself you're not going to be able to do it then guess what that's what's going to happen you're not going to be able to do it you know it's pretty much like when you when you're getting something oh i'm going to be late 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 guess what you're going to be late because that's what you're putting out there. You want to be late. You're not saying, yeah, I'm going to be on time. I'm going to be on time. I'm going to be on time. Yeah. You're not saying that, are you? So, um, you know, yeah, good luck to you, man. I hope I hope you sort of keep that and do it. I'm, I'm, sure, I'm sure you'll get there. You, know, you, you sound like you have the right mindset. You just keep keep plucking ahead, you know? Thank you. Thank you. And hey, I mean, if you know, once it all goes out, like once... Once I'm doing what I'm doing, I might go back to you and say, "Hey, uh, you know, let me travel over there to the UK and and let's hang out sometime, or something." I mean, yeah, man, for sure, for sure, absolutely. Yeah, I know, I know. Earlier, I mentioned mentioned that yeah, growing up in the in the 1780s, it was quite bad here, but you know, it's not so bad now. It's, it's all good. So uh, yeah, man, for sure, come come down, hit us up. And, and, uh, yeah, I don't mind. I don't mind experiencing. Yeah. Uh, the UK life. Uh, did you say you're based in London, or where did you say you were based at? Yeah, based based in London. Based yeah. in London. West London. Mm, man, I mean, I've, I want to mind because I've, and that's also the thing why I want to, like I told you, of paying for experiences and traveling, because if I can travel yeah. wherever, and also with like the podcast, uh, one of my things with it is, because um, right now obviously I'm just doing it through video, but I want to. Once I have the funds for it, I want to be able to have either either do it, mo- uh, do it in person, either here at the studio. Well, I mean, right now it's the apartment, but when I when I can get the studio or travel to the wherever that person is and do the podcast episode there, um, I mean, ha- having that type of experience. Like with you, if let's say we follow up years later 
and instead of doing the video i actually go there with you we could spend some time getting to know each other and enjoying that experience hell probably you can show me other ways to meditate she can show me your ways and while there and then Absolutely. and then and then do the podcast episode face to face and it's yeah yeah and, and marco look i i i regularly do sort of facebook lives uh i'm trying to put more content onto my my website so mm -hmm. you know feel free at any time um you know just just reach out and, and there's loads of i put a lot of uh things on there so it's just free training I'm, I'm putting out there with it uh yeah and if you need a device on, on how to meditate yeah for sure it's just, just here in the world we'll, we'll have the discussion offline perhaps about if you if you wanted to do that in the future uh, but yeah, by all means, please, please do get in touch. And look, uh, you said years. I hope it's not years. I hope it's within the year or something. You're you're able to achieve what you want to achieve. Yeah. yeah let's let's put, let's manifest that. Let's put that out there for you. Uh, in the next year, you're gonna you're gonna be able to do whatever it is that you have desired to do. You know. Mm -hmm. And because with because like with the manifesting what i keep telling myself is because i know people say like you know if like using the word if in there a lot like if i get there or or like once i get there and i always gotta tell myself don't tell your don't tell people or yourself that because that's kind of telling you um that that's a maybe maybe if you get there it's not that's a maybe it's i know i'm gonna get there and so i get so i always tell with my even with my girlfriend when she says about with the whole experience and she's like well i've never really experienced it so and i'm glad you have that and it's like no we will not that well if if i get where i want to be then we can experience it it's i don't i don't i always again with reassuring myself i'm like no i know we'll do it because i'll see i see myself when i go to sleep when i'm in silence just you know trying to manifest everything i see i see where i want to be and that wakes me up and says to to get up and and go in life because you know i also want to help my parents out uh make uh, you know, help them retire help and help people get their buy groceries like i want to because that's also a part of me where since i never really got a lot of help i want to help people too and I don't want to be that guy because you probably heard that saying of like the rich are evil and and yeah yeah and all that fun oh, yeah. stuff and it's like if I if I can be rich but still use part of my funds to pay for people's groceries especially groceries since of inflation I don't know how bad it is over in the UK but here in the US it's bad, it's really gotten bad 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 it's bad it's bad, bad. It's, bad it's, it's but hey you know let's not let's not focus on the bad. You know, it's gonna get it will get better it, it will happen uh, but look you know you, you're, if you have that as i said before wherever you're where, where your awareness goes your energy goes so just just keep putting your awareness to that actioning things that is really important as well you know it's not just about yeah i'm gonna sit here i'm gonna willfully put my awareness to something and you know i'm gonna meditate and then you know a million a million dollars is gonna land up in my lap no when you get the sign, when you get the intuition to do something, to take action, take it, because that, that's the sign from, you know, whatever you want to call it, God, universe, spirit, whatever it is you want to call it, you know, that's the sign that's telling you, right, take this next step. This is what's going to help you achieve what you want out of life, mm -hmm. you know? So, yeah, definitely, for sure. You know, when, you, when you're coming down to London, make sure you, make sure you hit me up. Yeah, I mean, it, and like with the whole uh, thing, uh, that's why with uh, with cause even though yes, I'm Catholic, um, but with like the whole praying, like on certain parts, like when you want to manifest stuff into your lap and people pray for it, uh, like my thing is, you can pray for it. However, if you're not doing anything, it's not gonna it's not gonna fall in your lap. A million dollars is not gonna fall in your lap, or in your case, a million pounds is not gonna fit in your lap. Like you. Yep. you can pray for it that's to me how i see praying is you're just it's a it's part of man of manifesting but on exactly the same, exactly the same. And, and so then once you can pray for anything you want you can 
pray for a better life, but if you're still stuck in the same loop, you're not going to get out of it until you get out of that loop, until you step forward and say, okay, uh, why do I want to, why do I want to do this and how can I do it? And you want to finally find the why and the how that's when the praying, that's when the, when they call it the blessings, that's when the blessings start coming because then your bad days start becoming the good days. And, and then, because people continuously always say they have the bad days and they always focus on the bad days, but they never want to change the bad days. And then that one good day they have, they're like, ah, well, no, nothing good ever stays. So that's cool. This, this good thing happened to me today, but I already know no, nothing good stays. So, and again, they just, they keep focusing on the, on the bad days and it's like, nope pray if you want to pray pray for a better day and go chase that go get that better day and then you'll start realizing more better days start coming and you'll realize the good days are finally here like the good days are they're better than the bad days obviously and sure sure absolutely, absolutely. Uh, do you get do you have any any questions for me for right now at the moment or anything i, I will link your uh your website and your, uh, I guess the, uh, your website already has a Facebook, but I'll still link uh, your website, the Facebook, and your Instagram in the description, where people can obviously go click on it if they, when they go see it. Um, but any questions for me right now? No, uh, Marco, I haven't. I've got any questions. You know, uh, you know, just, you know, as I've said in the last few minutes now, you know, I just wish you all the success with whatever you're doing with the podcast thanks you know thanks for having me on uh, and yeah if, if there's anything i can do for you personally you know just shout man um, you know, we may be a million miles away but we're not and it's very easy to connect with people so yeah just, just shout be mm -hmm, exactly and so that's like i said even though we're a million miles away but one day we can probably meet up with each other Hell, one day we might oh, yeah. even run across the street with each other. We we may we've never seen each other. It's just one day we're walking by, just or we eat at the same restaurant. Let's say I'm down in the UK, we eat at the same restaurant, or we go to the same pub, and until you know we just message each other and we say, "Oh yeah, I think I saw you," and or, or yeah, something. Yeah, exactly, exactly, exactly. Oh yeah, I, I I do hope to meet you in a pub one day. It'd be good. <laughs> It'd be good. Yeah, yeah, like I said, I'll, I'll, once I know I'll be in the UK, or if I want to do a part two, I'll come, I'll obviously message you, um, and I could probably bring my girlfriend, so then we could both, uh, so you can both show us to meditate better, and we could go over there and meditate, and then also uh, do a follow up episode, and yeah, kind of just enjoy the some days over there. Yeah, man, for sure, for sure. But, cool. All right, Marco. All right, all right. Like I said, I will link everything in the description. Uh, yours is a perfect one because I have already have one for Christmas, so yours will be a perfect one for New Year's since and because that Sunday, um, it's I believe New Year's, Correct. and so people want that want to do the New Year's resolutions. This episode, I feel like, would be a perfect starting episode for the year. Awesome, man. Awesome. Thank you so much. Oh, Marco, you have a good day. All right, okay, thank you, thank you, you too. And it will be out 11 a.m. my time, Central Time, and so uh, it'll pro. And for your end, it'll probably be uh, probably more in the af in what like afternoon, probably closer to nighttime. I'm assuming. Sure. Yeah. No worries. I mean, you let me know, and I'll, I'll put the links out on my my, my social media as well, and, and we'll let's spread the word. Perfect. Perfect. Well. You cool. have a great rest of your day. Thanks, Papa. Take care, buddy. All right. Yeah. Bye.